the two types of chromatic aberration and how we can apply them here in Nuke. So at this point, we are almost through the lens and we are now hitting the sensor. So let's take a look at why chromatic aberration happens and, well, let's first look at what it is. So here we have a very wide angle shot and with wide angle lenses, chromatic aberration is usually going to be present. Now it's going to be present more towards the edges or on the edges of in-focus objects. So if I zoom in here on the right, you'll notice that every single object is surrounded by a purple and a green line. And this is chromatic aberration because, again, the different colors have different wavelengths, so they move or uh, refract through the lens differently. So this type of chromatic aberration is the most common. It's called transversal or lateral chromatic aberration. And it happens when light is hitting the edge of a lens and gets bent improperly. So here we have an illustration of transversal or lateral chromatic aberration. And as the light is going through the lens, you can see here that the blue, green, and red wavelengths are beginning to be separated. And this happens more and more the further away from the center it is. So this is usually either a uh, purple and green fringing or a red and cyan fringing. And this occurs in almost every single lens, although some lenses deal with it a little bit better than others. Now this is transversal, so this is the probably the most common type of chromatic aberration that you're familiar with. There is another type of chromatic aberration called axial or longitudinal. And we can see this a little bit inside of this image. And this appears usually when we have something very close, very in focus against an out of focus background. And this usually appears as a purple fringe around an in-focus object. And this is actually a rather interesting thing. Uh, our eyes and the digital camera sensors we work with are most sensitive to green light. And so when the focus motor or the focus tends to um, get in focus, we focus on the green channel first. And that sometimes leaves the red and blue channel slightly out of focus. So if we jump back to our illustrations here, we can see axial or longitudinal problems or chromatic aberration happen because the wavelengths would or are focusing on the same plane. However, they are focusing at different distances through the sensor. So this happens only on in-focus objects. And for the most part, lenses uh, can fix this, or if you're paying attention while you're shooting, just slightly changing the focus will uh, tend to bring these closer together and fix that edge fringing issue. So now let's jump into Nuke and take a look at a few different ways we can apply these. So let's jump into our project, and since these are close to the sensor, uh, we'll add them in last. And to do a transversal uh, chromatic aberration, it's pretty simple. There's a few different ways we can do it. I'm going to show you one of my normal ways of doing it, and then a slightly more refined way. So one of the easiest ways to do this is to drop in two shuffle nodes. So I'm just going to shuffle one, shuffle two and they're both going to be plugged into the same input, our original image. And now what we're doing is we need to separate our channels and then uh, transform one of them differently and then merge them together. So let's say we want to expand the green channel. So let's go into Shuffle 2, and this will be our RB channels. So we want to turn green to black, and then Shuffle 1 will be our green channel and we want to turn red and blue to black. Okay, so here we have our green channel and our red and blue channel separated. So now if we merge these together, oops, if we hit M and merge these together with an add mode, or a plus, we're going to get the original image. Now what we can do is we can transform the green channel and change it and slightly offset it from the red and blue channels. Now to see this, we're going to have to zoom in quite a bit because we want this to be a subtle effect. So we just need to increase or decrease the scale. Now if we increase it by 0.1, we're going to get a very extreme chromatic aberration. There's probably not a lens on Earth that uh, messes up our colors this badly. So this is uh, uh, can only be a processing error, 
error on the terms of someone else. So let's dial this down uh, about a hundred or a thousand magnitudes of difference. So let's do a scale difference of 0 0.001. And now what we're going to get is a very subtle green and purple chromatic aberration. Now again, this is going to happen more on the edges of our frame. So as we can see here, we can almost see it right here, but in the center of our frame, we can't see it at all. So we can bump this up a few more. Uh, you, again, this is another effect you need to be really careful with. I see many people overdoing this and pretty much making chromatic aberration the movie. And we really want this to be a subtle effect. Even this right here is a little bit too strong. You can definitely see it, and you're definitely noticing there is a shift happening that is uh, beyond normal. So I'm going to bump this back down to maybe point 0.2. I believe that was giving us a good value. What you want is to create a little bit more contrast on your edges and just create a little bit more color inside of your shot. So here we can see we've got a little bit of green and a little bit of purple fringing. Okay, so this is looking pretty good as it is. Now let's say you wanted to do red and blue fringing. Well, all you need to do is switch these channels over. So let's do red on the left and then green on the right. And so now the red and the cyan channels will be offset from each other. So in other words, the red and the green and blue. Now, of course, we want to update this. So this is our GB channels and this is our red channel. So this is a, a fast way of doing it in a pinch. If we want a slightly um, more accurate way, we can actually use God rays. So I'm going to move these over here, and let's just disconnect them for now. And let's hit tab and drop in our God rays. Now what this does is it takes the current image, and then whatever we apply to it, or whatever transform we apply, it does... Um, a few copies and then blends between them. So this is actually a nice way to get a soft chromatic aberration. So if we want to begin with our green one, let's drop down to RGB and let's isolate the green and let's scale this up a little bit. Again, it's very easy to go overboard, so let's start at a very low value. Now again, we might need to increase this until we see it. There we go. And we might want to pull that back a little. And as you can see, this gives us a slightly softer chromatic aberration, and it is more of an additive mode. You can see it's very subtle, uh, even around the edges. So this is a nice way, and a, and a very node, uh, not intensive way, of giving us this nice chromatic aberration. And we can actually do this multiple times. If we want to say, let's, let's do the red channel instead of the green channel, so we have an outer fringe of red, and let's say we want a heavier inner fringe of blue, we can add another God Rays, and this time just change the blue channel. Let's go back to our RGB, switch it over to blue, and now let's just scale it down a little bit. So let's say maybe 0.99. Okay, and now we have a very subtle but very nice looking red to yellow and then purple to blue chromatic aberration. So as you can see, using these different techniques, you can create a lot of different variations uh, for these transversal uh, chromatic aberrations. So play around with these. Again, uh, <laughs> when we first add them, it's going to be fun to overdrive these, but again, this is, needs to be a subtle effect or it's really uh, going to begin breaking uh, your comp. So to add a, uh, the other kind, the axial, we just need to essentially find out what is in focus and then blur the red and blue channels of whatever is in focus. Now, since we already have an alpha channel in here, let's take a look at this. Okay, alpha channel. Uh, looks pretty good. We've got some clouds in here. That's a little strange. Uh, let's take a look at that. Well, let's take a look at that in a second. For now, we can add in an axial chromatic aberration by just mimicking nature. So if nature blurs just the um, red and blue channels, we can do the same. So let's turn off the green channel and let's just introduce a little bit of a red-blue blur. And you can see we begin to create that purple fringing around our object. Now, of course, this can quickly get into 70s photo territory, so we, again, need to be careful with this. And this does have a tendency to turn highlights or HDR areas pink, which is not exactly a great thing. Currently, we are just blurring the entire spectrum. So instead of blurring everything, let's just blur the edges of our alpha. 
So I'm just going to drop in a, let's say, uh, detect edges node. Or let's grab an edge detect node. And let's plug this in first so we can uh, get the edges of our alpha channel. Now this is going to give us the edges of our RGB. Switch this over to alpha. And this should give us the edges to our alpha. However, we still have our clouds in here, and we still have some highlights in here. Now, that's a rather odd. So let's find out where we're adding those in, because I think that's probably not supposed to be. So here is our alpha. Let's dial it down just so we can see if there's any bumps in it, so to speak. Let's go down. Our flares are not adding it. I have a feeling we're adding it right here where our diffraction is. So right now we're modifying the alpha channel, which we almost never want to do when doing RGB operations. So let's go to our two, our two diffraction merges and just disable outputting the alpha channel. And we need to do that on both of these. And now our alpha channel is back to its pristine state. Okay, so now our edge detect should correctly grab the alpha channel. There we go. And now all we need to do is blur the alpha channel. All right. So let's blur based off of that. And now we can see we only have that fringing. We actually need to, instead of connecting our blur into this, we need to connect its mask port so that we only have fringing around the edges. So now our highlights are maintaining their current uh, beautiful status. And our edges now have this slight, slight axial chromatic aberration going on. This is easier to see up here near the top. Just have a little bit of that purple fringing that is common uh, with that system. Now the axial chromatic aberration, as I said earlier, is really only going to be seen if you're very close to a subject and you're very sharp in focus and the focus cannot um, or the depth of field or the depth of focus is so razor thin that the different channels can actually separate from each other. So in this case, we're actually not going to have a lot of uh, axial aberration. So we can go back and bump that down. But it is an important aberration to keep in mind uh, uh, because it definitely can add credence and realism to things like macro shots and uh, smaller images that we want to add a little bit of that uh, axial chromatic aberration into. Okay, great. So try different channels. Uh, see what happens if you add chromatic aberration with uh, yellow and purple or uh, blue and um, blue and yellow, and see what these different looks uh, look like because each lens will create sort of a, a unique chromatic aberration. So in this lesson, we took a quick look at how we can create both the transversal aberration, which is aberration where the color spectrums spread out along the sensor, and the axial uh, chromatic aberration where the color spectrum actually spreads out into the sensor.